All right, so continuing from the previous lesson, uh, we saved the file uh, finger for rigging lesson FK, and we already have this bone set up. All right, let me just uh, click on my screencast. All right, we're on the right side. We renamed the bone, and it's still in forward kinematics. There is no copy uh, rotation uh, constraint from this. Uh, let me go to post mode here to show you. Okay, because this is before we save that. All right, so if you go back to the previous lesson, it's called the uh, Blender 4.1x um, uh, Armature Forward Kinematic Animation Lesson. So this is now the Inverse Kinematics. Okay, so uh, let's uh, set our bones. So we go to Edit Mode. Okay, we need one more bone right here, which will be the controller. So this is Inverse Kinematics. Remember when we uh, mentioned in forward kinematics that you have to uh, pretty much animate all the bones, I mean, per joint, kind of like when you're playing with an action figure, um, uh, kind of like stop motion, it's step-by-step -step manual animation, not unless you add some constraint, which we showed in there, you can automate at some capacity. This one is a little bit different, where you could actually animate um, using just one controller that would then... Um, animate the entire limb okay so let's add one here so under edit mode I'm just gonna press E okay the whole purpose of that new bone that we made right there is to be the one we're gonna be grabbing to control our animation okay so let's rename this right now and the name for this one is just basically the finger dot controller okay all right, there is that, and then we're going to press enter it, which should reflect it right there. Okay, um, from the previous lesson when we did our um, uh, skinning, where we parented the bone to the body, okay, um, all the bones one, two, and three were they were deforming this. Okay, this one shouldn't be added to the deformation of your model because it's just here, as kind of like a little handle to move your animation. So. Here, we need to make sure that the deform is unchecked, okay? We also need to open relations right here. We want to make sure that this thing is not parented to the object, okay? To the act, well, we're going to separate it. It'll still be here. We extrude it from there so that it's positions exactly where the, uh, the tail of bone zero three and it's uh, the head of finger controller are actually aligned okay so to in uh, the keyboard shortcut to unparent is while this bone is selected you have to be in edit mode to do this okay parenting and unparenting can't work in post mode only in edit mode alt p clear parent okay so uh, let me click undo you can also do that by opening relations right here under the bone tab and you can put X on that one. That would be the same thing as clicking Alt P and clearing parent. Okay. All right. So now we are ready to, uh, to uh, set the inverse kinematics on this. All right. So let's go to post mode. All right. So again, when you set up constraint, you can only do that in inverse kinematics. So. This is the bone that we want to basically uh, um, to animate to affect all this and curl the finger automatically for us, okay? Without having to move them. So that's why this is the reverse or the inverse of forward kinematics where it's like a chain, okay? So in a chain, if I grab the very bottom of the chain with the top chain being held um, in place, uh, by moving the lower chain, it will affect all the chain um, and move with the lower chain. Okay, so that's the whole idea here. And you'll see it uh, once I uh, position this one. So select bone tree, add inverse kinematics, okay? And we need to set it up. So now it's asking... Which target, we only have one armature, same thing as the first lesson, okay? Bone, basically, what will be driving or moving this bone? So it has, it's this controller right here. So we're gonna select it. We named it finger controller. There it is. And the setup is now done. 
okay you can also set the chain link but we don't have any bone attached to this after so if i just move this one with the g grab tool you can see right here that it's automatically curling for us okay there it is and um, we can make this one stay because if you go beyond it separates itself so let's kind of leave that alone for now um you know just uh, to simplify things okay we can make that thing lock in place but that's for later it's just a copy location okay so now uh, this is all set up okay we can now animate this like so all right so this is inverse kinematics you can see here uh, if I move this controller it doesn't move bone one but it's able to affect all the uh, chain in between okay also the controller right here gets locked meaning if i move this that one is staying in place so that means we can do so much more animation with this as opposed to forward kinematics because in order for me to do this in forward kinematics i have to keep keyframing this to stay in place because remember in forward kinematics, you move this and it moves the entire object as a whole because it's step by step. Okay, so from the previous lesson, I'm going to press A to select all Alt G to reset all my movement. Or if you go to Pose and Clear Transform, there is the keyboard shortcut for it. Okay, so now we need to set up our um, skinning. Okay, so I'm going to go to Object Mode. Let's select the finger first shift click any parts of the bone okay control p automatic weights all right and that's done so now let's animate or move our uh, controller and you can only do that when you're in post mode okay so if i go to post mode there it is and same kind of issues before um i don't like the fact that we're losing some mass right here so let's clear that real quick so from the previous lesson, it's quite obvious what, uh, what we need to do. I just kind of painted it a little bit red right here. Okay, so uh, let's do that real quick. I'm going to select the uh, uh, bone in object mode. So let me select that. Then shift click the finger. Once you do that, you can go to weight paint then. Your bone will be selected right here, bone selection. And then in order to manipulate or paint this uh, bone to simply alt click or option click it. Okay. And we can change our brush to add. Okay. Uh, lower the weight right there and strength a little bit. And I just want to kind of brush this here real quick. So red means full uh, influence. Okay. And... Uh, Blue means no influence at all. All right, that should be it. Okay, if I go to the side viewport right here, let's go to object mode, select our finger right here, go to post mode. All right, right there. Okay, so let's say we want to animate um, this particular one and then, uh, whoop, uh, same mistake as the previous one. <laughs> Let me delete that keyframe right there. Keep forgetting that the keyframe is on 176 when I shared the file. Um, we could do some animations. Okay, so now um, let's do an uh, automatic key right here. So if I move this, uh, let me save this, by the way. So I'll save as. This is now IK instead of FK. All right, so that, that one is preserved. And then we have another uh, version right here. So with auto keyframe... Wherever I kind of move that, that gets automatically keyed because we have this on, okay? But even more important, if I click on only active keying set, it will only uh, animate what's pertaining. So um, we can click that right there and then it will lock the animation to whatever is active here or whatever selected. But we don't need to, it will still... Uh, keyframe that for us the only difference is um, the keyboard shortcut now I no longer works okay okay uh, oops sorry uh, no longer works as a, an active kind of let me undo that K now gives us the option 
for keying a specific one, okay? So if I press I right now, it will still add keyframe, but it adds keyframe to all of these, okay? So let me click undo. If I click on active keying only and I press I, okay? It will also select all of those because we didn't specify right here which one is what you want as active. All right. So you got all the keys right here. But later on, if you just select a particular one, okay, right there, and I press I, I sorry, K, location, all right, you are isolating what's in here. But let's not worry about that for now, okay? So again, if you're wondering what happened to the uh, options when you press I before, they are now in keyboard shortcut K. All right, so let's do some, uh, oh, I still have this key right here. So let me delete that keyframe. Oh no, that's the, press all right here. Okay, let me clean it up, there we go. So we're just moving, uh, we're just doing uh, location at this point, okay? So let's say we wanna animate this finger to a crawl, all right? so. Uh, let's start with uh, our keyframe right here being kind of like so. Oops, sorry. Up. All right. And uh, we want it to kind of crawl. So um, we go, let's say, let's just do divisible of 20s here. So we get the point and it's, we can always re edit the keyframing. So I'm going to press G right here. Okay, on frame 20, and I want this one to kind of go low like so. All right, I'm just kind of eyeballing that uh, the uh, boat right here would be on this uh, line right here. So that's my keyframe for that. And then on this one, kind of move it up. Okay, so it went from this one, okay, to that. All right, so. Uh, we can move this one, of course, uh, lower if we want to. It's just that, again, we are not, we don't have a base and we just kind of want to start it right here. So it'll just go like so, so you could see that. And now we're going to go to frame 20. We want to advance this one. So we're going to press G. Okay, we want it kind of like a worm. Okay, right there. So when we scrub that. Okay, and then to make it uh, kind of match it, we can lower that right here so that it's not sinking below. There we go. Then we go to 60. We now move this kind of forward. We move that up so it's not sliding below ground. Okay, then we go to 80. We do the exact same thing. Again, forward kinema inverse kinematics makes uh, all the counter animation kind of disappear when it comes to simple animations like this. Make adjustments right there, so. And there's no sliding. And it's all uh, automatically keyed, okay? No static animation on rotation and scaling. So if we play this, okay, and then we can keep going on and on and on, okay? And then you can add, I guess, variation on this one right here uh, where you can, um, if you move this kind of sideways, uh, Uh, I mean, rotate it sideways, but uh, I'm in here. Let's see. Does that make it warm, more warmy? Not even a word. Let's see. So once it lands, and then it 
starting to crawl so on 30 we go like so okay but before that uh, um, yeah just on the active one now so we have it on one we go like this and then when we go to 40 which is uh, sorry 50 then 70 then 90 and then 100 we just uh, zero that kind of put zero on the numbers right there okay now let's watch our animation here I'm gonna turn off all the gizmos for now let's see if it's a uh, change this to 100 frames only so it will cycle okay all right inverse kinematics and setup this is on 4.1 all right um, again uh, new animation system a lot of the uh, keyboard shortcut chains and the way you weight paint okay and uh, just uh, and the uh, model for this one um, uh, with the bone with the FK will also be in the description.